That was a clip. Uh, I don't know if we got that one right. That was probably my fault. That was a clip from the Bridge Over the River Kwai. Uh, uh, which, uh, anyway, we'll talk about that. Dennis and I talk a lot about movies. We're both. Well, right. you know, I've been traveling since I retired, Tim, and I was in Sri Lanka. I'll tell you real quick. Uh, yeah. Carolyn was, uh, you know, reading local uh, reading about the local culture and visiting gardens and i i wanted to see the where they shot the bridge on the river kwai and i got there and it's uh, owned by a, a, there's a corner in the river that's owned by an american guy who puts floaties out and i said wasn't this where america uh, bridge on the river kwai was shot he said yeah it's up there there's a desalinization plant or something and uh, the local guide took me up and we walked around 30 minutes into the jungle and there's one last strut next to the river from the bridge on the river Kwai, david lean's version i have a picture of me standing next to it it meant a lot to me because you know how much i love movies so to finally trek to that place uh it was that's exciting. really cool did the english prisoners build the desalinization plant is that too uh, <laughs> they brought them in you will build a desalinization plant. <laughs> it was some sort of plant. I threw desalinization, but I doubt during a or next to a freshwater, but something like that. They made concrete or coke, or I mean the coke for steel, something like that. But it had a really acrid uh, odor about it, and uh, it was just funny to. Uh, uh, I don't know. I went to Wadi Rum last year where they shot the uh, Lawrence of Arabia. So things like that. Some people want to visit gravestones and stuff. I like to visit movie sets. Now I have to get to, and we've talked about this movie. It's my favorite movie, Local Hero. And I have to get to the town because they've left the phone booth up from the town in Scotland where they shot Local Hero. Oh, I have to get a picture of me at the phone booth before I leave this planet and I'm hoping to do it. Well, watch out, watch out for the guy on the dirt bike. The, the yes. Honda 150. Or Who is, uh, that guy on the bike is the guy, the kid from Gregory's girl. No, yes. you're kidding me, yes. Tim. I never that's knew that. That's who drives by on the bicycle. Then he shows up later at the big dance in the film. Well, oh, we could... Don't you think, uh, Forsyth, Bill Forsyth was a precursor to Richard Curtis? that same sort of whimsical British Owls type, uh, you know, like uh, Notting Hill and all that stuff. Yes, I, I, absolutely. I, I thought it was, and then there's the the good one about Edinburgh, the ice cream wars. Yeah, oh, I forget something. that actor's name, but yes, that that's also a, a good film. Yeah, he was a, I thought he was a fascinating. He was sort of like the British Owls, Preston Sturgis to some degree. And Peter yeah. Ringer yes. absolutely killed that. 100% part. or... Um, George Stevens, when he did the comedy, uh, the more the merrier, which is also one of my favorites. Uh, well, that close up stuff. Who did, but who did that ECU stuff better than Stevens, Monty Clift and Elizabeth Taylor out on the porch. Uh, yeah. in, uh, why am I blanking on uh, the name? Place, you know, in the, uh, place in the sun, the place in the sun. And then the horny close up of, uh, it, it's so funny to watch Gene Arthur oh. be in sort of a torrid scene with, uh, yeah. Uh, you know that extreme close-up thing out on the stoop of the apartment. Great, yeah, he's a great filmmaker. Joe. You've seen that film, the, the docu, right by his kid. Uh, it's, not, it's one of my favorite movies. I, I watched too, it for a couple of years. It's just fantastic. And they do they talk about that kiss with Gene Arthur a lot in it because it's so sexy and it's just like you know it's just a kiss. But I think it is it's part of you know it's it's rare for her to be that aroused i guess and yeah and, and i always wonder if funny. joe, joe mccray said here's my career uh they send it to coop if he passes on it i do it <laughs> <laughs> uh but i always wonder if if he i i think i read somewhere that he talked her out of retirement to come back and do shane because she really did wasn't a big part i mean she was a big part of the movie shane but you know, it was really the kid and Alan Ladd, and she was sort of the mom. And yeah, she wasn't easy, Jean Arthur. I've read enough about her. It was always, really? you know, somebody who's always on the verge of quitting. You know, yeah. that person. Sometimes you just got to concede for all your problems with show business. 
you caught a cosmic wave right into the shore, kind of stay out of it, but you can't really always be uh, on, oh, this is not my thing, you know, and I think that wore people down or something. Yeah, kind of like Garrison Keeler. He was always quitting. And then, uh, then coming. Well, you know, Letterman was making 30 million a year there, and he was always uh, quitting. Oh, the suits have me down. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, so let's talk about, let's go back to sports for a second. We got a couple of minutes left. We'll go back to sports a little bit. Like, so when you were a kid, who were your favorite athletes? No, Bobby Clemente, obviously. Uh-huh. Uh, the a god yeah i can see um, that, absolutely especially connie in- hawkins i had tickets to the pittsburgh pipers in the aba and the hawk had been kept out of the nba at that point i think he re-enters eventually with the phoenix suns but it's apre 30 hawk but when he was a young guy right it was the closest thing you saw to julius you know yeah. like the windmill dunks and uh, they didn't have three-point shot oh, maybe they yeah. did in the aba that's right uh, in the aba they did because Actually, uh, you're right. They, I think they introduced it, and then college brought it on, and the pros brought it on. Yeah, but Hawk would camp out on the baseline, and we had Charlie Williams, Chico Vaughn, Tommy Washington, and uh, I think it was a cat named Billy Helicopter Heads. But the glue guy was Artie Heyman, who used to play at Duke, and he comes in, and uh, he's a beautiful, like uh, Bradley works off the ball. They congeal. They win the title. So the Hawk was big to me. Bobby Clemente was big to me. And Billy Maz might as well have had one of those high life fronton things down at second base to turn the DP. I think he and Gene Alley one year had 215 double plays because Maz, Alley to Maz, and it would just, he would just accelerate the ball. You know, he never gloved it. It was just like, you know, the thing they whip the ball with. And yeah. <laughs> he would throw it. And Don Clendenin had the biggest stretch in the history of sports. So we knocked off a lot of double plays. Were you a Franco Harris fan? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Franco was, uh, you know, well, anybody in the Steelers. But Joe Green was my guy. I remember, you know, the Steelers always had a rough history. But Joe Green comes in, and I remember one of his first games, instead of going nose up on the center, he goes at a 45-degree angle and ear holes the guy. And then you could almost hear a collective thing in Pittsburgh. Well, our desultory past has just changed. <laughs> <laughs> he was a bad man, Joe Green. Uh, one of my claims to fame is Franco Harris once came to my house. Uh, oh, he he Jesus, worked. Was, I worked was, he, with, was with, he with Goldie and Tim? <laughs> uh, no, uh, he. Uh, we worked at a restaurant because he was a hotel restaurant major. This is when he was at Penn State, but he was still a big deal. And the guy who got him to go to Penn State was the owner of the restaurant. This guy Walter Conti, who could speak Italian, and so when they recruited him, Walter Conti went to New Jersey to speak to the mother who only spoke Italian. And that's how oh, Franco yeah. Harris ended up at Penn State. And one night I love that move. We and, played uh, basketball. Was with, wasn't he with Lydell Mitchell then? Yes. And he was, Lydell Mitchell was the man and Franco was like the blocker. And in the NFL, it's sort of, uh, they, they switched. So, um, God darn. I said, God darn. <laughs> I should say, gosh darn. Uh, we're done here. Um, Dennis, thank Look, you so much for doing this. This is I'm, 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 I'm back. I'm more. always amenable. Okay, that's that would be great. Thank you. I'd love to do that. Uh, I'll see you this week on the golf course. And thank you, uh, Jeremiah. Thank you, Dr. D. Again, and uh, we'll see you next time on It's Radio with TV's Tim Stack. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Dennis.